Hello and welcome to the April edition of Radix's new video series. Today we're going to be talking about first quarter multifamily performance and how the leading indicators that we track in Radix have done over the past three months. Starting off with traffic, we've seen a pretty strong growth uh, since the year began uh, across the nation with traffic patterns. At the beginning of the year, national average traffic was right around six tours per property per week, and that's jumped above eight uh, since January. Really an indication that the demand for multifamily housing and the pickup ahead of the prime rental season is in full swing. Now, leasing activity hasn't followed suit quite as strongly as traffic. Yes, new leases signed are up, uh, but not quite as significantly as we've seen in traffic. So as a result, the closing ratio is a little bit lower than we saw at the end of the year. However, strong indications are for a good leasing season, given that both traffic and leasing are already up. Uh, occupancy is holding pretty steady, around 94.3%, dipping a little bit uh, in the first quarter. However, we feel like occupancy has kind of plateaued or, or perhaps cratered out um, at around 94.3 and will likely uh, begin to improve in the coming months in that prime rental season. Now, why has occupancy fallen as low as it has? Well, new supply is certainly having an impact on the multifamily industry this year. Uh, going back to 2021, the new supply that we saw didn't really have as much of an impact given how strong demand was, but as demand has tapered off a little bit, construction has still continued on uh, full swing. We've got a lot of new units coming on, especially in, I'd say, the Sun Belt and the top 10 markets for performance over the past couple of years. So there will be significant supply pressures in, in certain of those uh, Texas, Carolina, Florida, and Southwestern markets, Phoenix included in there as well. Um, we've got more than a million units under construction right now nationwide. So it's not just those Sun Belt markets. We are seeing supply pressure uh, across, the, across the country, but it's most heavily concentrated in the Sun Belt, um, not as much in some of the gateway markets and the coastal markets that we've seen in years previous. In fact, the gateway markets overall are doing quite well, um, with the exception of Boston. Uh, NER is up fairly significantly uh, above the national average for the first quarter in New York, in Washington, D.C., certainly in Chicago, in L.A., and even in San Francisco. Uh, Boston does seem to be the market that's lagging the national average, down 80 basis points year to date. Uh, but some of those other gateway markets, Washington, Chicago, New York, uh, have seen NER jump more than 1%. Uh, this is particularly meaningful, especially given that the first quarter tends to be a soft or even a negative uh, quarter for rent growth in most of the country. To have the gateway markets pick up as strongly as they have is really a good indication for these markets. Going back two, three, four years, even before the pandemic, the gateway markets have been struggling compared to some of the Sun Belt markets we've been tracking. So at least as of now through the first quarter, it appears that there's a reversal to that trend with gateway markets outperforming some of the Sun Belt on a rent basis. Occupancy is a little bit different. Boston actually is outperforming the national average with 30 basis points of, of increased occupancy thus far in the first quarter. The rest of the gateway markets are kind of right around the national average, some outperforming, um, but some underperforming as well. When you look at some of those Sun Belt markets, occupancies are way off, looking at places like Houston, like Las Vegas, and like, like Phoenix as well. Um, those markets continue to struggle, uh, as I mentioned, under the, under the glut of new supply that's being added. Um, overall, you know, rent growth, as I mentioned, uh, at the national level is uh, 10 basis points uh, up from the beginning of the year. Again, 10 basis points is not a huge growth rate, but given that in years previous we've seen declines in the first quarter or flat uh, growth in, in terms of rents, I see the, the modest growth as a good sign, especially as we move into the prime rental season. These next three months, the second quarter, typically the best quarter for rent growth and, and property performance are going to be important. Again, we'll have to combat a lot of the new supply that's being added, perhaps some of the deliveries that were added last year um, that are still in lease up phase. You will see some struggling at the micro level in terms of those lease up rents, likely concessions uh, being passed along to the, to the tenants as well in a number of those lease up properties. But overall, we're seeing pretty good, pretty good fundamentals as we kick off the year. Uh, and we look forward to bringing you more insights through our video series in the coming months.